my best to get through this bio efficiently. You deserve it. Jordan Abel is a queer Nishka writer from Vancouver. He is the author of The Place of Scraps, which was the winner of the Dorothy Lives A Poetry Prize, also Uninhibited and Engine, which was the winner of the Griffin Poetry Prize. Nishka won the Hubert Evans Nonfiction Prize and the VMI Betsy Warland Between Genres Award and was a finalist for the Hillary Weston Writers Trust Prize for Nonfiction, the Wilfred Eggleston Award for Nonfiction, and the Roderick Haig Brown Regional Prize. Abel's work has been published in numerous journals and magazines, including Canadian Literature, the Capilano Review, and the Fiddlehead. And his work has been anthologized widely, including the Broadview Instruction to Literature. Abel completed a PhD at Simon Fraser University in 2019, and is currently an associate professor in the Department of English and Film Studies at the University of Alberta, where he teaches indigenous literatures, research creation, and creative writing. And in conversation with Jordan will be Mercedes Ayn. Mercedes is the author of Mercenary English, Prison Industrial Complex Explodes, which won the BC Poetry Prize, and My White Mama. She is an assistant professor at Emily Carr University of Art and Design, where she organizes the On Edge Reading Series. Mercedes dreams and works towards a prison-free future. Round of applause for both of our actors. I think this is probably the time where you come to the stage and uh, yeah, you know, we didn't discuss it before, but it feels like the social cue that we Cool, enjoy the show. Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Uh, should I, I we, we didn't really talk about what we were gonna do, but uh, <laughs> should, should I start, start off with a, a reading and then we can, can converse? Is that, it's like, yeah, hey Kevin, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, yeah, thank you all for, for being here. Uh, this is an awesome, awesome moment for me. Uh, Awesome time to be able to, to launch this book, uh, and this is the this is the hometown show, so to speak. <laughs> uh, so you know, it's uh, yeah, it's amazing to see so many, so many friends. Uh, yeah, it's re really uh, yeah, lovely to be able to share share this work with with all of you. Uh, and I'm yeah, I've been I've been writing this book. I've, I've finished writing it now. It's done. <laughs> I, I, it took me like seven or eight years, and uh, and I started my the very first beginnings of it started uh, in yeah started during my time at, at SFU uh, during a comprehensive exam that I was doing with Sophie. So <laughs> yeah, it's uh, awesome, awesome that you're here and. Uh, you know, that was, yeah, it was a really gener gener generative moment. Um, so this is, uh, this is such, such a strange book, and I'm so incredibly grateful that Nicole and Stewart uh, took a chance on it. Uh, and, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been an interest, it's been a very interesting book for me to, to read from, uh, because I, I can, for the most part, Read from lots, lots of the pages, which is uh, <laughs> this is a thing I'm not familiar with. <laughs> uh, if you if you've seen my, my other works, uh, they they present some some difficulties. <laughs> uh, but I'll I'll read. Uh, I I think I'll, I'll read from a few different sections and and ho hopefully you know maybe somewhere between ten and fifteen minutes ish. Um, Okay. A deep, narrow chasm, black rocks. The river lies still on those black rocks. A mile above, there is a tumbling. There is a moment. At this very moment, there is a tumbling in the air a mile above us that runs straight through the open heavens and into some other place. A deep hollow, no shape, no consistency, no breaking some hundred feet in the air. Some places are softer than others, some hundred feet up in the air. 
Some right angles enter into narrow passageways, and some right angles break off a mile in the air above us. These rocks are full of cracks. Water has worked through some deep hollows, breaking here, wearing there, breaking and wearing until the chasm separates into two caverns. Some hundred feet in the air, there is no danger. There is scattered driftwood and the scent of roses. There are glimpses of roses and rocks and shrubs in the spring rain. There is a steep, rugged ascent, a path that winds among the black rocks and trees. Somewhere in the air, there is a scent of roses. Somewhere out there is the wilderness, a reasonable distance through scenes of greenery and nature and glimpses of mountain ranges that disappear just as suddenly as they appear. Among the rocks and trees, there are mounds of earth and other rocks and other driftwood. Somewhere there is an islet and another islet and a clear sheet of water and bald rocks just beneath the surface. There are forests and straits and islets and rocks and somewhere in the air is a scent of roses. There are crevices and fissures and rocks. The rocks surround themselves with other rocks, although there are sometimes mounds of earth in between. On the shore, there are fragments of rocks. In the deeper parts of the river, there is more tumbling. At this very moment, the river pours into a wide fissure where it just becomes more water between rocks. Between the broken rocks and the deep, roaring cavern, there is a scent of roses and driftwood and trees. There is light. There are straight, naked rocks and immovable trees. There are woods and rivers, and the bed of this particular river is ragged with rocks and intersecting ravines that cut silently across the water above. Somewhere in the air is a scent of roses. The woods are full of sounds and rocks and trees. The woods are full. The upper air, where it drifts over the tops of trees, is full of sounds. Just where it breaks over the tops of trees, there are slow, intermingling drifts of sounds and scents that brush over the clearing some hundred feet up in the air. Rocks and logs and mounds of earth and narrow fissures and bottom land and little ponds and pouring rain and a brook that shoots through the narrow fissures, spreading through moment after moment of stretched light. There is a bellowing in the passageways between the rocks. There are moments of admonished madness. There are moments spreading over the acres of bottom land. There are precipices and adjacent lakes and headwaters. There is a fierceness here that floats through the waters. These rivers are full to the brim. These waters stream down to our feet. In six hours, these waters will rush in, and in another six hours, these waters will rush out. Salt grows in this water. The water in the woods and on the lakes and in the higher parts of the sea, stretching out horizontally until the current flows upward like blood at the throat. On these waters, the edges touch the shores and the dirt paths trace back to the streams. In the short distance between the water and the black rocks, there is a deep shadow. The breath of the stream, the glancing waters, the throat of the river, these woods are full. Oh, skip ahead. Like 80 pages. <laughs> you can just imagine all the descriptions of, of land in between. Somewhere there are bodies hollowing out earth from under the road. Some mountain waters disappear into the earth. Some waters dry up. Some flesh carries the lingering scent of roses. Some flesh disappears into the summer heat. Some flesh remembers the contours of the town. Some flesh will sink into the black earth beneath the town. In the summer, the bones will be bleached by the sun. In the summer, there are bodies within bodies in the sticky heat of the night. Bodies entangled in waves of heat. Bodies in the darkness. If there are bodies on the roadways, 
if there are stretches of crushed stones between the houses, if the flesh rots in the heat, if the bodies are drained of blood, if some other softer place is not softer at all, if there is a howling wind between the cracks and the bricks, if there are bodies in towns and broken land and hunger and fire and windows that look out onto the road, if flesh is peeled from the bone, if the blood runs like a river through the streets, if there are broken sheets of warm rain cutting through the summer nights, if there are yellow lights from the town and warm rain and black rocks, if the town has disappeared into the rain, if the broken line comes together again, if the south seems like a dream, if there is the taste of blood in the air, if the bones sink into the mud in the summer rain, if there are lines connecting the tips of buildings, if a line is drawn in the mud, if the, t if the town, if the connecting lines, if the tree branches, if there are voices, if the blood sprays into the air, if there are leaves in the streets, if the road diverges into other roads, if there is a knife pressing at the throat of each body in the town, if there is a taste of smoke in the town, if there is a strong gust of wind that follows the curvature of the ditches and glides through the town at 90 miles an hour, at this height, about a quarter mile from the edge of the town, the sun burns the tops of buildings. The shining sky is just a little closer. There are bodies and there are small fires and there are moments when they seem to intertwine and exist only together as one. There are bodies that walk along the streets. If there is a bright light that drifts down the streets and out of the town, just above the rooftops, there is water hanging in the air. Just above the rooftops, there is an orange, delicate sky. Just above the rooftops, there is the old light from old stars piercing the morning. Just between the glittering stars, there is an emptiness. Well, fast forward again. <laughs> uh, and this, this is the, the last last part I'll read from, from the, uh, the, the 13th chapter. There's, a, there's 13 chapters and there's 13 paragraphs in this book. Uh, yeah, so each, each chapter is a paragraph and each, each, each chapter is also a reflection and rewriting of the, of the previous chapter. So the, so the book is it's always rewriting itself. Burning light, a clear sheet of water, and bodies sinking to the center of the earth. Some waters remember the endless expanse of highway, sounds that come from tomorrow. Burning clouds hang from the trees, a bright, deep hollow. A crumbling city ripples outward in the water. A hundred passageways, collapsing concrete, slow intermingling drifts of broken glass a bright shining place, lights and clouds and branches, bright lines running parallel, silence from a deep narrow ravine. Broken lines run in parallel, broken bodies in the streets, crumpled, crumpled metal in the river, endless waters, spiraling cities, broken shafts of light, concrete towers falling on the mossy floor of the forest, Rooftops and moonlight and a thousand glittering stars and a street and a mouth and a river. Some waters carry the floating bodies, a soft silvery wind. The smell of garbage glides up to the black clouds 100 feet in the air. There is a mist that drifts over the smoldering chunks of cement. If the forest rises, if a line is drawn around the burning copper wire, if the soft curvature of the glass reflects the light from the moon, if a street is healed from the crust of the earth, on the shore there is a taste of garbage in the air, 
At this height, about a half mile from the base of the collapsed towers, there are mounds of black earth and shrubs and driftwood. There is the sound of rushing waters coming from some other softer place. There is a nakedness out here in the cascading neon. Sometimes there are mountain ranges and an unbroken wall of lights and islets and streets and pools of evaporating blood and broken branches and fractured storefronts and rivers and floating bodies and deep bright places and mossy hollows and fragments of driftwood and bars and breath and soft carpets and ravines that seem to drift into each other. Somewhere there is light exploding within light. Some things last forever. There is a current of air, a deep hollow, a river flowing over the city. And I will, I will pause there too. Uh, and, and pivot to inviting this conversation. Thank you. So in 
uh, uninhabited and, and an engine um, as using those corpuses of, of Western novels uh, and and the and the, the output, my creative output, the look, looked like poetry, you know, but it was the I guess entwining or entwining of poetry and fiction. Um, and you know, for, for empty spaces, you know, this book started with uh, with an interest in James Fenimore Cooper's The Last Name of Higgins, which which is a novel. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I really one of one of the very early things that I decided was that I really wanted to work in, a, in longer forms uh, and to and to move away from working with the line and to instead work with the sentence uh, and, and I, I guess maybe the paragraph. <laughs> uh, you know, so I so I, I made that decision really early on to, to try to try to you know begin in a similar place like the um, previous projects, but to but to move in a different way and to find find a new pathway through those things, um, and you know I also really you know I, I really like the idea of of writing a novel, but writing a novel that only I could write, <laughs> uh, and 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 that really. Um, you know that that catalyzed something for me 